previously on I am Nick D. Clements. 2016 was a big one. I made her this. And this whole thing was just a way for her to find out which gift that she could open. So for this year, last year, 2018, I will tell you in a future video. I will give you a hint. It involves a microwave. And now, the thrilling conclusion. I was just wondering what is on your schedule for tomorrow. Would you be up for helping me make, try and make some hard candy? Yeah, basically you just boil sugar, cornstarch, flavoring, and food coloring. Yeah, I wanted to practice that. Okay. So the main idea is for for the um, countdown, so you know I made the box two years ago with all the little figures, like the shadow box with the magnetic figures. So I'm making molds of those figures, and uh, so I'm gonna pour candy into those. So it'll be little like flat candies, and it'll be, it'll be fell candy. Like falconry, so fell candy, fell, fell candy. So I'm making fell candy. And then so and then she'll have to try and match the shape of the candy to the picture. Honestly, it was like the easiest idea. <laughs> if that's easy. So I'm I'm making the molds right now. Okay, cool. Yeah, maybe like 11 or so tomorrow. So I just have a little dental vacuum former here. This is a great way to get into vacuum forming if you, one, don't want to build your own vacuum former, or two, spend a lot more on a much bigger machine. For the most part, that's the way I tend to go about buying new equipment or learning new skills. I'll buy the cheaper, smaller version of what I want to do, learn on that, and then I can make a much more educated decision when it comes time to buy a bigger one if I feel I need that. So while I'd love to have a big vacuum forming machine, I one, don't have the motivation to build one right now, and two, I still have quite a bit of learning to do on this machine, but luckily I can do a lot of that learning right now. So I went ahead and ordered some thermoplastic off Amazon that's already cut to size for this machine, and in the description it said hard. So I was expecting something hard. What I got was not that. I figured it'd be something more like this styrene, very rigid. So I wasn't really sure if this is gonna work for what I wanted to do. So I did a few tests. The first one was very thin and it really didn't get much harder once it was vacuum formed. The second, I removed some of the platforming from the machine. So I was able to get a bit thicker of a mold but it's still very thin and seems very flimsy. So then I just stuck a piece of styrene in there and that really gave me the type of mold that I was expecting. So the next step was to actually try and cast candy in here. And of course, my big question was, if I'm using heat to deform this plastic in the first place, what's gonna happen when I just pour hot candy into it? To test them, I just melted some Jolly Ranchers, a bag of Jolly Ranchers in the microwave. Melt them in the microwave. And that got plenty hot and both of the molds were actually able to hold up to the heat, although the styrene seemed to deform a little bit more than this dental plastic. And it turns out, being able to bend this so much easier allowed me to actually release the candy from the mold, whereas this rigid plastic, not so much. The candy pretty much just broke as I tried to get out of the mold. So I think I will end up just using this original dental plastic. That's also kind of a great example about what you think you need, not necessarily being better than what you already have. Another issue with the styrene is that the printed paper on my original stuck to the styrene when it was melted and then peeled off. So not only did I ruin my original, I then had paper and toner stuck to the plastic, which I wasn't really able to clean off. Now, while this didn't stick to the printed paper like the styrene did, it did leave a bit of a ghosted image. So I went ahead and sprayed all of my pieces with a clear coat to hopefully protect the image a bit more and prevent it from leaving any residue on my mold. So I have all of my original pieces here. There's 25 of them to do, but uh, I only have 17 sheets of the dental plastic. But uh, I should be able to double up each one and that should be able to allow me to get 25 and still have a few extra sheets if I make any mistakes. So the process of vacuum forming is pretty straightforward. It's gonna be the same on a tiny machine like this as it is on a big machine. You take your plastic, 
You put it in some sort of frame. And then you need some kind of heating element, whether that element is built in or if you take this frame and put it in your oven. And while that's heating up, I'm gonna place my first two items on the platform. And then once you start to get a nice droop in the middle, you want to kick on your vacuum and slam it down. This will cause the melted plastic to conform around whatever's sitting on your platform with a high level of detail. Give it some time to cool down and then you can remove it from the frame. And then attempt to demold your originals. So the paper is still sticking in the mold a bit in some of the really tiny areas and fine points and it does want to peel off so so using these originals is definitely not an ideal candidate for this kind of vacuum forming it'd be better if i were to just recut these out of a board without the attached paper that'd be quite a bit of work another alternative would be to mold these in silicone which would be much more gentle on the original but that'd be much more expensive although it would hold up to the heat better. So there's quite a bit of pros and cons. I went with this because it's the fastest, potentially easiest, but also the least costly way to go about doing this. First big thing that I've learned, I've been heating the plastic for too long. This last one that I just did, I heated a lot less than the previous few and I ended up with a much thicker plastic on my overall casting. These are very, very thin. This one is a much more ideal surface. So I think finding the right amount of time, the right amount of droopage, knowing exactly how long to melt the plastic, that's all part of really mastering this process. But this is very promising. Not only is it a thicker mold, but I was actually able to demold my items a lot easier. It didn't melt to the paper nearly as much. This is all very good. Let's eat this one for uh, is 35 seconds enough. Maybe 55 seconds. It didn't pull down nearly enough. It's definitely tricky finding that sweet spot. So it actually, we'll try. I mean, there's no reason not to. We'll heat this up a bit more. Now that's one nice thing that these have magnets in them. They don't move. Okay, so we're gonna get a second shot on this one. That's cool. All right, this one might've been salvaged. That demolds so much easier when you do it properly, but the details lacking. So that's kind of the trade-off too. Like most things, it's a balance. Now these two are perfect. That one's perfect. Normally, if you're curious, there's this big reservoir with all these metal beads that they normally use and they'll put your dental casting in this and then they'll put the sheet over top of the dental casting to make like bite splints and stuff. I'm not 100% sure what the point of the beads are. Um, I'm sure you could look into it. Maybe it just kind of distributes the vacuum and it kind of prevents the stuff from being pulled into the vacuum, although it doesn't really do it too much. So instead of these holes, you just get a whole bunch of weird bubbles. Most of the time you're cutting all this excess stuff off. But anyway, that's that's the normal operation of this machine. So this green gasket just helps make this seal for this tray. But I don't really need this tray because all it does is just make the mold that much thicker. And then my actual material is far thinner because there's not enough plastic to bend all the way into the mold and then on top of my things. Also, my pieces have a magnet in them. So they don't play very well with these steel beads. Nice droopage. That one got a little too warm. I should have been paying more attention. Of course, if the heating element is already heated, preheated, then the timing's gonna be different. Man, this is tough. Oh, 
All right, I got all my molds done. Some of them came out really nice. I got really good at knowing the exact time that I needed to drop down the plastic. It became a lot more about just watching the plastic and seeing it change versus just dropping it at a specific time. Because doing it just based on time is pretty relative. Depending on how hot the heating element already is, that could really throw off the amount of time. If you do it once, it might take two minutes, but you do it again quickly enough, it might only take 30 seconds. So I really just kind of watched the plastic. It would kind of bubble up and then get really wrinkly, and then it would all go smooth, like a lake smoothing out. And when you saw it go smooth, that's when I knew to pull it down. And that seemed to give me the best results for this application. My originals as well fared a lot better. They came out of the mold with minimal to no damage. So everything really worked out and I really learned a lot over the course of just doing 20 molds. So now the next step is to just get these all cleaned and washed and ready for candy. Yeah, we're already 150. No way. It is 175 right now. We burned it, it's for just, real. It's just too slow. Do I have 270? Yeah, that certainly looks better. So actually, yeah, you have quite a bit of time before it burns. If right. you have that much time before it finally burns. Right. Say it's 300. Once it cools down, it stops bubbling. Now that we know how to do it, it's actually pretty easy. <laughs> Ooh. Whoa. 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 Oh my god. Straight up my nose. 
Christopher, I think that's so funny. You all right, Nick? Yeah. Yeah, that was a smell. Woo! This isn't gonna work any better. I don't know if I have enough time. You wanna try and do a few? They're better than the first pour. The first pour. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot less flashing. I guess if it's just kind of sitting on its own and not moving, it's just going to keep itself heated. So I actually got a lot more usable castings from candy making with my mom than I thought I did. But uh, there's still several birds that need to be made into candy, so to supplement those, I'm going to be doing it the easy way and melting Jolly Ranchers, gummies, and chocolate just in the microwave and then spooning them into the remaining molds to fill in the rest of the birds that I don't have yet. And also just to add some more variety of color. Strawberry, cherry, watermelon. Cherry, fruit punch. Now I did this in my initial testing and it casted just fine, but I didn't taste them because the molds weren't clean. The last time I tried something like this, I did it with gummy bears. And while it worked, it seemed to actually change the taste of the gummy. It almost amplified the sweetness. They were super, super sweet. So it seemed to have a chemical change on the actual properties of the gummy. They are also a lot thicker. I don't know if you've ever made marshmallow taffy, it's where you take a marshmallow or a couple marshmallows and you knead it in your fingers until it turns into marshmallow taffy. It completely changes the taste of the marshmallow. It's really interesting. And it's a really great idea to make it and eat it if you have braces. I should probably have it on this hand so I can still have dexterity with my spoon. That looks pretty good. Let's move on to uh, the gummy. I'll do the chocolate last. That should be easiest to cast, although chocolate can be a little bit difficult to melt just because you can burn it pretty easily. I wanted to just do orange, so hopefully I can get enough. It does not seem to be a popular color. I need a you want blue? There's tons of blue. Wow, that is all the orange. All right, we'll see how many I can get. No mistakes with this one. Now the gummies at least, I should be able to cut off any flashing. So these should be quite a bit uh, easier to, to work with in post-processing. All right, 
but three's enough. And I guess I could do, I already have yellow. I could mix the red and yellow. Let's try that. I don't know what flavor that's gonna be. What flavor is that gonna be? Bold cherry, so a bold cherry electric lemonade. One, two, three, just try even them out. <laughs> and didn't quite get an orange, not a really vibrant orange. Guess I could put food coloring in it. Oh, it actually looks good. It looks like a nice orange there. The gummies, these gummies should be pretty detailed. But we'll see. We'll see if they even come out of the mold. Maybe they won't. And four chocolate. Perfect. Yeah, that's a good amount. So we'll do finish up with chocolate. The issue with melting chocolate is that it won't immediately melt. It'll hold its form even when it's melted. So it might look like it's not even melted yet when it is. So you really want to take a lot of checks. Starting to warm up. Oh dear. I have gooey on my gloves and it's stuck. So we'll start another. The other issue with chocolate aside from burning it is that it can seize up. It becomes a very weird grainy texture and then it's pretty much impossible to do anything with it. Plus it just tastes awful once it gets to that point. See how it's still quite solid, but yet it's hot enough that once you start mixing it, it all melts into a liquid. That should definitely work. The chocolate too should be more forgiving with flashing than the hard candy as well. I knew the hard candy would be most difficult, but I just, that seemed the most cool. Because chocolate's easy, melting pre-made candies, fairly easy, if not quite messy. All right, so that should be it. That should give me a different candy bird for every day up till Christmas. So I should have, I should have 26 actually different birds. And then I can mix and match between all the different flavors. So majority of them will be the uh, homemade rock candy, sugar candy. And then we'll can supplement a few more with just some of these extras here. I think that'll be enough. Take a bowl of hot water. Everything should be sufficiently cooled. And it doesn't look like much, but yeah, this was this mold was one of the super thin ones. Mold my, yeah, and this is one I need, so better work out. The Jolly Rancher certainly don't feel as sticky as the uh, homemade stuff. Don't think I'll really need any powdered sugar for those. So I do want to taste. That really does not taste any different. It tastes the same. It tastes exactly the same. I'm sure those are wonderful noises. All right, now these ones I'm very interested in. They're gonna come out of the mold. Maybe these need to be refrigerated as well. All right, it looks like a few hours in the freezer has done the trick. And there they go. Coming right out of the mold. Very nice. There's quite a bit of detail on those. Chocolate, of course. Super easy. Should we do powdered sugar on the gummies? Does that taste weird? <laughs> All right, good. Yep. It's a super interesting, it's good, but it's super sweet. It like magnifies the sugar. These are warming up quickly. This is one I actually need.
they are done. I have 25 unique birds of prey, predatory birds, in an array of different colors and flavors. They've all been packaged, even barcoded, with their flavors written on them. I think they came out really good. Some have a lot of nice detail. A lot of the silhouettes definitely translate. You can definitely tell you're looking at a bird. I mean, maybe a few are kind of ambiguous blobs, but if Reese's can call this a tree, I can call this a bird of prey. Anyway, there's plenty like this one and this one that are definitely recognizable as at least birds. So one of the final steps is I need to cut out stickers of the actual bird and she will have to use the candy to match up to the sticker to know which gift to open. And to cut them out, I'm going to try and do it on my scan and cut. Of course, if it doesn't work, I can just cut them out by hand, but this should give me a nice clean look and be pretty quick. Well, that's off. Why is that so far off? Oh, I know why. Still super off. It's a uh, bounding box to media size tissue. I was only opening it to the crop thing, so it was over too hard. Are you kidding me? All right, not great, but usable. I'll give it one more go. It's so inconsistent. It doesn't make any sense at all. All right, well, that's a little disappointing, but they're they're good enough for what they are. I mean, I could print more, but I, I, I really need to get it done, so. I mean, the cut quality is fantastic. It's, it's a way better cut than I could get by hand, but I just, I was not able to get it to cut in the right place. I'm not sure why. Maybe it wasn't printed right. Anyway, these will work. And some aren't too bad, but as you can tell, it's not cut right. They were gonna be like an additional gift. They were gonna be a usable sticker as well, but I think since they didn't come out that great, I'll just stick them on the gift and I'll try and cut some better ones some other time or something like that. So. But anyway, this is done. I'm just calling that done and moving on. Right, 25 gifts all wrapped and bird stickers on them and cheat numbers on them. So really the only thing left to do is to put all of the uh, candy into the advent calendar. Now Lisa has actually already put gifts for me in the boxes. So I have to try and put my gifts for her in there without actually looking so I don't ruin my own surprises. That wasn't too bad. You probably saw more than I did, so it worked out okay. Is that cute?
Alkiani? Alkiani? Oh my god, what the hell? Oh! That's too much work. <laughs> Alkiani? Cinnamon rock. Cool. And I know you made them. It contains no actual falcon or bird of prey. Oh. Uh, did you do that? Mm hmm. That's stupid. Why did you do that? Because you have to match the silhouette of the bird to the picture of the bird on the gift to know which one you can open. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> sucks to be you. <laughs> That's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. Okay. So, was it this one or that one? The bird, the actual candy bird, yeah. I went, uh, oh, so. Cool. I went over to my mom to have her help me make candy, Yeah. which I thought would help me. No. But I forgot, well, I forgot to take our good thermometer, so we were using her old one, which is like 70 degrees off. So the first two batches completely burned before it even hit 300 degrees, and we're like, what's going on? I'm like, I'm gonna go to Meyer and buy a proper thermometer. <laughs> Next three batches were perfect. So that one, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, and he was in the one on Yeah, you can, there's cheats on the back if you need it. <laughs> Just in case. Cinnamon rock. Is it a footlight? Mm-hmm. Oh, those are cute. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> that's neat. Oh, that's really cool. That's really neat. That's cool. Thank you. <laughs> that's really cool. Oh. 